we've been discussing the Leafs obviously all afternoon and mm -hmm. um, where do, where do you see them starting this this venture this off season? Where does Dubas when Dubas and Shanahan sit down together? Let's say they go out for dinner tonight, patio of course, social distancing, um, and they just say, what are what are we going to do here? Where where do you think the conversation's going to start, or where does it have to start? Well, it, it's interesting that you mentioned Shanahan because as I was going through all the different scenarios for the Leafs today, sort of decompressing, you know, trying to do it in a very detached way as as we should. Um, I wonder if he doesn't get more involved than he has been. Um, you know, he's a guy who has won numerous Stanley Cups, and he did so on teams. And I know it's a different era, and the game has changed, but he did so on teams that had a balance of all-world skill, uh, but also, you know, the necessarily other elements that Columbus has plenty of that, made a difference in that series in my mind and uh, you know I was talking to you know a, a former player today who made that point again and, and I don't want to make it in a knee jerk way but to me it, it's just so apparent to me when you're when you're covering a St. Louis Boston Cup final last year and it didn't matter who would have won that cup because both teams brought plenty of it the the, the level of physicality involved in that series combined with tremendous puck possession skill like you need both not one or the other no kidding but that was such a heavily played series and a year before that the washington capitals if they weren't beating you in the alley they were beating you in front of the net they combined their high-end skill with their heaviness as well and and i i know there are more than one ways to win a championship but that lesson has to come true in my mind mm -hmm. i mean they, that's they, a they, facelift here though that's not one player that's that's multiple transactions to and, and Jamie said earlier right. in the show you can't you can't bring in quality players and the, and the Toronto Maple Leaf Joe from the bridge theory is well yeah trade a seventh round pick for uh, right Roman Yossi yeah it's just it's yeah. nuts so it's like it's it's a it's a big job it's yeah it's scary to think that we're talking like that at this particular point of this Toronto Maple Leafs team that it's a big job <laughs> yeah I mean. Listen, I mean, to me, you know, Lena and Nylander is, is an easy way to at least dip your toes into it because you know you have a lot of skill and there would be a lot of interest in him. Um, they also have guys coming off the books, which will help. They also have this other element, and I'm sure you guys have touched on this, but I feel league-wide it's been not touched on a lot, is that there are so many people focused on the fact that the cap is frozen and that's going to create a lot of difficulty for a lot of teams. It's not just that the cap is frozen. There are other teams, because of the financial hardship of the pandemic, who will have a number that's different than the cap, much lower. And I'm telling you right now, there are players that are going to be made available in the fall that you would not have thought of yeah. because of the financial hardship in real life. Never mind the cap, in real life. And that's where, if you're looking for some silver linings today, it's still a very good lease team. I think MLSC can exploit frankly what could be more of a have and have not nhl dynamic here for the next couple of years i think montreal hopes to exploit it i think the rangers will try to exploit it as they keep building their young team you know um it'll be an opportunity for some teams but not all because of the realities that we're living in so that's one thing i would say to keep an eye on when it comes to leafs i don't know if you remember this and i i am not trading william nylander like i'm not trying to advocate for it but i do you remember when he signed and he said Kyle told him he's not trading him? Right. That guy, that's, the, that's the only thing I can think of when I, when I hear people saying, well, Nylander's got a, you know, would be an attractive piece. Would Kyle, I mean, this is a scenario where Kyle's got to do what's best for the team and not just do, you know, when you're signing a player, hey, I'm never going to trade you. Like, mm -hmm. if, if, if Nylander's the guy that they deem has to go, he would be the guy. Like, uh, Of course. I, I, of but course. I know, but, uh, but I'm not. I'm just bringing up no, a fact it, that. It, do you remember what William he Nylander said? It, said absolutely. Yeah, which, he, if that's he, if that was true, I mean that that at the time I remember thinking, wait a minute, this guy just sat in Sweden for four months, then you gave him the deal, and then you guaranteed you wouldn't move him. Well, yeah, like, but it's not guaranteed. I mean, of course not. Out, it can't be. But it's not in the contract. No, exactly. So, right. I don't know. I mean, the Philadelphia Flyers once told Jeff Carter they weren't trading after signing him, and then he ended up in Columbus. Yeah, DeMar DeRozan. There's uh, a lot of examples. So, I don't know. It's a big boy business.
Oh, it I has mean, to be. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And I think, honestly, this – and it's not even – it's not, not Nylander in particular. It could be anybody. Right. But I, there's a part of me that wonders, you know, Shanahan, who you just mentioned in, in his history, if he realizes he's let this go too far with, you know, going from Lou and what that was all about with Lou and Babcock to where it is today. Right. Where it's just the players are kind of just doing their own thing and they all got paid. And, and I wonder if he's thinking, I got to snap these guys back into reality. Like, right. You guys don't just get to determine that you play here the rest of your life. No, like and I think there's there's some real, I think there's some real truth in what you just said, Brian. And 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 listen, I, I think that the team was a lot more comfortable after, you know, the way it ended with Babcock playing for Sheldon Keith. And I think Sheldon Keith is a good coach, but there is that feeling that you've given the keys to the kingdom to a bunch of young players who haven't won anything yet, and and that some of that has to be earned. And so where's that line between where Babcock was and where perhaps Keefe is and needs to, needs to be a, a little harder? Um, I think that'll be part of Sheldon Keefe's own self-diagnosis here in the offseason. He's a sharp guy. I, I'll tell you this, I, some of the, you know, the shots taken at him in the last 24 hours I think have been a little over the top. I, I think he's brought this program along, um, you know, pretty well given that he took over after the year had started. But again, he's got to get better too. And you know, it, it, it is what it is. He's a rookie head coach with a very young team still. And right, you know, the thing I, I said last night on Twitter, and again, I'm not trying to. There's this reaction among Leaf fans of this incredible upset loss. It's upsetting because a team that Leaf fans want so badly to be among the elite has lost again early. But let's respect the Columbus Blue Jackets here. They had 81 points in the standings at the pause, just like the Toronto Maple Leafs. They just happened to be made up completely differently in terms of their style of play and their roster right. makeup. That, that's not an upset. Columbus did not upset the Toronto Maple Leafs. That was a toss-up of a series. It played out that way. It's, it just stings for Leaf fans because it's the accumulation of the last four years. But the, the idea that losing to Columbus is unacceptable is a little rich for me. Not unacceptable, but they were supposed to beat them. I understand they're a good team. They work hard, but no Duchesne, no Panarin, Bobrovsky leaves. It's just they – The way supposed, you win game four, you, you'd think, mm -hmm. you know, that that's right. a spark yeah. where it's like, okay, we're alive. We shouldn't be. Let's go. We're playing with house money. And last night, I thought it was a fairly even game. It was kind of just a, you know, like you said, Noodles, a chess match. It wasn't much yeah. of a game. It wasn't fireworks back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was just a game. It happened to be a, a do-or-die game. Uh, but it's, yeah, I mean, I, you're right, Pierre. Of course you are in terms of Columbus. And they, they dictated the pace of play and the style of play more so than the Leafs. And as a result, they move on. They deserve to move on. They don't have to make excuses. But it's the accumulation. Like, that's what it is. Right. And it's not just For four sure, years. It's, it's, not yeah. four, it's not just four years. It's 15. They haven't won a playoff series in 15 years, Pierre. Right. And it's wow. the same thing every single year. There's been multiple owners. There's been multiple GMs, coaches, a whole new roster of players. Mm -hmm. And as I said at the start of the show, they are way more talented today, way more. And they're better today than they were years ago. Well, but it's, it's still a very talented, flat feeling. It's easily, the, in my mind, the most talented of all those Leaf teams of the past 15 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but how much so, know? Pierre? They couldn't score a goal in the final game and their three best players were on one line, and then when they changed it, it what went out there? I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I don't understand that comment. I know what no, you're saying. No, it's true. That's a good yeah. point, though. Their, their, their big four are, are better, of course, than anything they've had in a long, long time. Beyond that, you can't, you can't tell depth. me that the that's rest of their lineup is – like Cody Cece's playing on the top pair. Yeah. No, like, and, that's and, not, and it's, it sounds like more appropriate yeah. comment is they have three really good players. Exactly. Four, like, they got one, way one more top-end talent than they have. The rest of it is still undetermined. Yeah. Right. How much and, better and it really is. I, I talked to you guys early in the season about when I talked to other teams and, and I grant them the, you know, the cloak of anonymity, what other management types felt about the Leafs, and it's actually played out. The year kind of played out the way a lot of those rival teams thought, which is super high skill but can't defend when it matters. I mean, that's what everyone thought. Yep. Um, and so, you know, and obviously the Tyson Berry deal was not a good one, as it turns out. You've got to take shots. No one's batting a 1,000, but that was not a good deal at all as it turns out for the team and you know and maybe Nazem Kadri will go in his cup now with Colorado you guys can talk about that but um, you know what I, I still think that 
the good outweighs the bad with Kyle Dubas, but this is a big moment for him because the moment he fired Mike Babcock, he made this his stamp, his team, yeah. his philosophy. This is a gigantic offseason for him. Oh, it's yeah. huge. It ha- it has to be because you know. And if but what does it mean if Shanahan's getting more involved? You know, if that ends up happening, like you you suggested, it might. I, I'm saying I want to see that. I don't know that it will. Okay. But I'm saying I think it's a time for him to do that in this off season. That would and, suggest to and me he that he has done that. Listen, Brian, he's done that at times. As oh, he's no. been heavily involved. He's yeah. he's been in the meetings. You know, he's been negotiating contract. He was in the bubble, right? Like this isn't. He's not part owner. He's he's his. This is the hockey team that he is working with. That that's why he's he's directly involved. But if if he does need to get more involved, I think we all would know why. It's because Dubas would need probably a push over the ledge as right. to where he has to change. You know, because if if he does, I, I'm not convinced Dubas sees this as massive changes. Well, he may look at it like mass shooting percentage. Next year we'll get it and we'll go on a heater. Well, he may that, look at it that way. I'll, right. I'll, cl- I'll step on there even more. Last summer, we talked if, if Mike Babcock was going to stay. Remember, every the whole narrative is he has to change his approach. Correct? Did we not? Mm-hmm. It wasn't that like, that was a fair statement. For sure. And then when it didn't work out, like to me, maybe this summer the the narrative is is Sheldon or uh, Kyle Dubas may have to change his approach to the way that he constructs his team. Like that. That's. That, and that might come from above. Right. That, right. Brandon Shanahan may say, you know what, I, wh- I've noticed that this team needs uh, is a regular season. They're great in the regular season. When push comes to shove in the playoffs, they play like it's regular season and everyone else plays like it's in the playoffs. And right. we need more bite. Like, well, it, and, and, and let's see who wins the cup. And, it, it, you know, copycat is not the way to go out at it as your number right. one attribute. But if you have a third consecutive year where a deep, talented team has combined – puck possession skill with heaviness. I, I don't know how you can ignore that. Pierre, puck <laughs> possession skill with heaviness has been around forever, let alone the past three years. Forever. Right. right. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just, we, you know. The Detroit I, I, Red Wings, they had skill, but you know what? They had heaviness, too. They had Darren McCarty, Chris Draper, Brendan Shanahan. Yeah. Mosby, for sure. Chelios. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. They, it's not like they were just out there uh, playing shinny. No, but I'm saying, you know, when you talk to teams now, what's happened most recently, there's definitely a recency bias. But, but the recency bias tells the same story is what I'm saying. I mean, it really would – it just blew you away watching St. Louis Boston every night in the rink last yeah. night. You're like, wow, yeah. this, this is the type of hockey. Ultimately, as a hockey team, as an organization, you don't want to turn into one organization. You know what that is? The Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Why? What's wrong with them? They're a joke. Hold on. I'm just thinking myself off the floor here. And you're a joke and a fraud for being a fan.